quick, quick off season. So good to see you guys again. Uh, looking forward to a great year. And like always, we appreciate you guys coming out and supporting us and then building our story. So uh, looking forward to Looking forward to connecting with you guys this season. And uh, like Gordon said, we're excited to get our game started on Wednesday, our second leg. Yeah, look, it's, it's uh, good to see the room full. We don't take it for granted that you guys could be in a lot of different places and you value our story and, and sharing the, the kickoff to the season with us. So appreciate you guys being here. And um, yeah, it's, it's been good to get to know a lot of the room here. Um, we, we appreciate you guys, so thanks. Um, Listen, we're, we're really excited. Um, the preseason was great. We, we, I've said it a few times that we could have used a few more weeks because it just seems to be so much to think about and consider and prepare for, which I'm sure we'll get into in a bit. But um, it's great to see our, our group uh, held together. Thanks to Dennis to keep the staff together, to re-sign guys. We're strong. We're fit. Um, and what a great group. It's just a reminder, uh, again, when you when you spend that many hours and days with the team that we've we've built here over the years, that what a great roster of people and players that we have, and I'm 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 grateful, fortunate for you to be leading the team. So there you have it. Hey guys, uh, Dylan Butler, Pro Soccer USA. I guess kind of for for both of you guys, um, when you have your exit meetings um, only a few months ago, um, what is it? Uh, or the couple of things that maybe you addressed that you wanted to have to improve the team in this upcoming year. And, and also, in MLS, as you know, it's so hard to, to keep the nucleus of a roster from year to year. And it seems like somehow you guys have been able to do that. Will that be especially beneficial as you compete for championships this year? Yeah, look, I think uh, <clears throat> at the end of the season, you know, you, you're trying to figure out what is it you can do to, to get one more win to get to that cup final. And so for us was uh, trying to keep our group together because we thought that was important. Because uh, when we think about our playing style and, and having more guys who understand the way we play and having success with that, we thought that was a, a key priority going to off season. How many guys can we bring back? The end of the season, um, things go really quickly. Worth preparing, thinking there's a final uh, coming. And then all of a sudden things end. So now the exit interviews in this in this building we sit uh, with players and the it, with the coaching staff it's a open door policy so we put things straight to, to the players we we just try to leave the the year um, having open dialogue see what things what's on the players mind share what's on our mind and for each guy it's a very different discussion um, because you're talking about some guys who have played a lot maybe an injured player, what does the offseason look like, how can we help, where are you going to be, Let's, and we just get on the same page quickly. So, And then it's, and then it's uh, with Dennis and the staff quickly seeing how can we improve the roster, how do we make it uh, slightly better, how can we think of every little thing, and then quickly prepare for the combine and draft. Which is, so things go quickly, but that was, that's the, the thinking uh, right when the season ends. The MLS Cup has been the goal for this team for so long, a chance for you guys to win your first. But with the competition you're in now, the Champions League, it's a chance to win for the first time in the league history, to become the first team to do that. Uh, how much does this competition mean to the club? Does it possibly even mean more than MLS Cup, given that fact that, that no one in, in MLS history has won the, the Champions League and the Club World Cup and all of that? I can speak on, on our behalf, and myself, the staff, and, and the players, and I, and I feel the same support from Dennis and the, and the club, the entire organization, that, that every competition, it's, we're in it to win it. We want to push as hard as we can, and, and that means also pushing the right way. So I think we can see in, in leg one, we took it very serious. We prepared all of preseason for, for that. Uh, as well, and um, we certainly know that we're not we're not winning MLS Cup um, in February, right? So we can lose the Champions League if we're not ready. So we have to kind of have a an eye on all the prizes, but one at a time and one day at a time. But it means a lot to the club. Trophies mean a lot to us as competitors. Um, 
And of course, the MLS Cup is out there. We'll go for that again for sure. But this one's right in front of us, so we're going strong. Every time you play and, and, and you have a chance to win a trophy, you take it seriously. And, and we've shown that over the years. And so it's a balancing act because uh, the games do come quick in terms of the real important games in the CCL this early. And so for us, it is a lot of the work that goes into it is in the off season with our guys in terms of what they do and prepare themselves. So when, when we start preseason, they're ready to go. And, and you can see from the, our first outing, uh, it was a good showing. And so, you know, our, our, our mindset is, you know, we're in this tournament, we want to win it. And, and then, you know, get through that. And then they have the Open Cup and then you have the league. And so trying to balance all three of them is important. And, and, and part of that is having a deep roster because you're going to be called upon at different times. And we know the importance of making sure you do that because you don't want to um, extend guys too early too much because then you risk, you risk injury. So uh, doing a good job of making sure we have the right balance. You can have three matches in the next eight days starting uh, starting on Wednesday. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what perhaps we might see from you in terms of testing that depth with games in the league and in the Champions League. Yeah, look, we we have to think that there's three games, especially how we're sitting right now without taking anything for granted. And I think uh, this room here and, and our organization will see that we believe in our depth. We have a deep roster. Um, I think the deepest that we've had since we've been board again credit to Dennis because I you know we just say Dennis get this done and uh, he gets it done so and he's done it once again we see how he's locked up the back line a bit and, and um, you know some teams are it's overhauls for us it's just tweaking here and there Ed um, and I think we've done a good job he's done a good job um, yeah so I think we're gonna push on Wednesday night and, and, and I think w again we can't get it too ahead of ourselves it has to be one game at a time but I think we also can learn from our own experiences, and I'm learning that as well. And then even from watching other teams, even I mean, we've we've watched Toronto closely, enviously how they've gone after the Cup and Champions League, and how you know they've dealt with some injuries last year by getting it maybe extended, and maybe it's some circumstance. But um, again, watching them with a close eye, we see you know do, do they push certain guys too much? So. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're going to Columbus then in uh, our opening MLS game. We're going for three points, not conservative. Not we're going to try to go after every game. We will test our depth for sure. Um, always with the eye of giving ourselves the best chance for three points. You know, I'll start with uh, with Chris. Um, Kaku's numbers uh, dropped off significantly during the second half of last season. I know he was still involved in, in the playmaking and in creating some chances for you guys, but uh, I think one of the things he said at uh, closing media day was that defenses and opposing teams became more aware of how he played and what his strengths were. How do you go about freeing him up and getting him back to the Kaku that we saw during the first half of last season when he racked up like 14 assists in, I don't know, two, three months? Yeah, um, I, I think it's a good question. Um, but I think all along in those stretches, again, if, if we would have to think about tweaking some things if Kaku wasn't creating chances and the team wasn't winning. However, Kaku's creating chances and the team's winning. Not only winning, winning the supporter shield. You know what I'm saying? So if team's on a down, not creating chances. Kaku was in the middle of all of that, playing major minutes, understanding tactically what we do. I mean, the value of Bradley Wright Phillips and Kaku, um, if we really know what we're looking at, right, they, those guys play against the ball. No one does it more than Brad. No one gives more than Brad. And Kaku is the, when you compare him to Valeri or Piatti or around the league, playmakers, no one puts in the defensive work that Kaku does. So on certain days, you know, it depends how you're looking at it. We see that a great game might not be a great game for you, Franco. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and again, even if you talked about, and I referred to it, the one game, right, in a tight, tight game, we went to Columbus in the playoffs. We outshoot them 8-6. We lose 1-0. Uh, we had a chance. We hit the post. Kaku gives us three big looks in a tight, tight game. So for me, he was, he was good down the stretch. He was good down the stretch. Now, the last part of it um, is that, and we've worked on it in preseason, just the relationships, relationships between outside backs and outside midfielders, the relationships with Brad and Kaku. Can you stay higher? Can you stay closer? Where can you, you really do some damage? Closer to the goal. So we've worked on that, and it's, it's been great. It's been great because he, he loves scoring. He loves assisting even more. 
So it's a good question, but um, I think I look at it a little bit differently. Either. Just We don't just look at assists when we think of, of our best players up, up the field. And then one for Dennis, uh, I know you've recently been asked about the third designated player. Why haven't you guys signed a third DP over the past year and a half to, to fine tune and bolster this roster? I mean, there's a, there's a right mid spot um, on this team that seems to rotate quite a bit, or a right winger. Um, the other the other spots, you pretty much know the lineup. You know, you know the other guys. Why why haven't you guys um, yeah, brought I mean, on a third DP? I mean, I, I would look at. I, I think you're we're getting caught up in, in DPS. You know, I, I mean, I can sit and tell you that Aaron Long is playing like a DP. You know, he's the best defender in the league. You know, we have Kamara Lawrence. So for us, it, it's not about the DP. It's just about in terms of what what makes sense for us in terms of getting the right players in here that fit the way we want to play. And if it happens to be there's a DP out there, then we're not afraid. I mean, we've shown that we've gone out and, and gotten Gaku. So, uh, you know, we've signed this year uh, Jurgensen, who's a young player that we think has a real good upside. And so it's just for us to continue to develop and, and, and sort of keep an eye on what players make sense for us and come in and fit the, the position uh, to make our team better. And so we're always looking, you know, the, 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 the spot's open. Uh, we have resources that if we want to, if the player comes along, we can, we can make that investment. Wouldn't it be better to have that spot, have, fill that option? It's an option you guys have. You're a big market team. Um, I, the players want to come here. It's not, you know, it's not like yeah, you guys are again, scrounging like maybe the Kansas it's City. It's more is. about the us having the right players that want to come here for us, right? So yeah, a lot of players want to come to MLS, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's the right fit for us here. And so we want to make sure that we do our homework the right way and find the right fit for us in terms of the player and if he fits our style, that the coach feels that he's comfortable with having that player here. So. You know, we're, we're, we're always looking. And so if, if the player comes across, then we'll we'll sign him. And we we knew we needed to address that when we got Kaku, and so there's no different. Uh, and so, you know, we have a, a different way of looking at players. We look towards more younger players, and, you know, we signed Kaku as a young DP, and, and now he's, he's a DP. And so now we sign uh, Jurgensen, and hopefully if all goes well, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, so we're always looking. You're, when you did your an – when you analyzed last year – how much did that help strengthen you guys with the, all of that early work that you did, the early competition, that, you know, leading into MLS season? Um, and just, I mean, obviously the depth is a huge issue for, you know, which which was a, an advantage for you guys. But I just wonder, in in your an analysis, how much that kind of helped you, you know, strengthen you as your season went on? I'll give a quick answer, and he can probably add more. But I think it's more credit to the players and, and Tony Jewell, our uh, fitness coach, because I think the. The work and the preparation that he gave them in the off season, and they took it to heart and made sure that they came in, and th that they did the work in the off season, even though it was a short off season, and then they come in ready to go. I think that it's a credit to them. And, and now, you know, I think uh, it's sort of them then getting up to speed with with Chris and, and what he wants them to do. And so I think he can probably elaborate more on that. But I think it's it's the players get a lot of credit on, on, on that part. I think when we look back. Um at the Champions League, the, the, the different experiences that we, we've had in the competition. And again, we, we talked earlier about learning from the past. And, and we came in a few years ago, and we were not ready. Physically, we we're, were not ready. Um, we didn't use the offseason the right way, and it was a quick exit. You, again, you cannot take those games for granted. Uh, those games are different. Um, and we and we we had a late a late start to it. Like, we just were second to everything in, in uh, in the first Champions League in Vancouver. So um, this past season was very different. And so what did that do? Well, coming in fit, it, it let you do more. It allows you to do more. Preseasons were it was much different at the start of 2018. And we came out flying. So then it helps the, the team just get through the first round, and then confidence builds. We we were able to play different players in eighteen in that in tournament because of that tournament. We uh, at that time we we used different players and that that was a major benefit, avoiding injuries, exposure for for players, exposing more players to bigger games, different games, and other MLS games. Um, and then I think the last part of it was you get to use those games and then you get to add to your experience. Coaching staff how to manage different opposition. Things we hadn't seen before, man-to-man -man marking, all these different scenarios that were thrown at us, having to think about elevation and manage many different situations. So I think uh, when, when you talk about having experience, that's what it was. It gave us invaluable experience. So.
really valuable, I think, down the stretch last year, and we'll use it the same way this year. The last part of it was, was a big part of it. We flew out of the gates quickly in MLS. Like, I think you end up being ahead of things. You're just ahead of things. You have to push everything. You're on the details much earlier. You're forced to be on the set pieces, tactics, you know, uh, you know, elimination games earlier. The urgency in the players, the, the whole bit, um, helped us get a great start last year. From your homegrown signing that that was made uh, this offseason, what have you? What did you see from Omir? Uh, did you see that made him so ready to get that experience? 15, 20 minutes last week. You know, De Dennis has a good way of seeing everything, and he's we're in the in the in the everyday grind of things. He he can kind of say, all right, listen, we've seen Omir, Chris. You got to take a look at this guy. I've watched him a little bit here, and so we, when we finally started watching even some video from college, you know, I say he's really interesting, and we've seen him in the past, but. Then to make the decision to commit to Omir, to bring him in, that was the first step um, for some of the qualities that he, he uh, and the scouts saw. And then once in preseason, you can see that the beauty of having some of the homegrowns, the guys that have been through the system a little bit, the, um, you know, they, we bring them because we like certain qualities, and then they grow in the system, in the philosophy, in the style of play, uh, from physically and, in the, and mentally what what uh, is expected and he then has a gift of football in in him where he you know he, he there's certain types of we say buckets of players and, and, and an attacker he's he's got intelligence he's fast his top speeds are impressive he's shifty his change of speed is interesting um, so in the final third where things are maybe the hardest to operate he has a an easier way than other players so in preseason, it wasn't that uh, you can't ignore that he's scoring goals. He's scoring goals in different ways. He's running behind back lines. He's breaking down defenses on his own. This was interesting. Um, in a way, like Flo Vallo be looks a little different at times. Um, so yeah, it was he's a guy in that game against Pantoja that, that we thought would still help us be aggressive. <laughs> Could also play against the ball and put a lot in that way. And we thought he earned those minutes. And with with me and our staff, you'll 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 get what you you deserve type of thing. If you earn it, we don't care if you're young. If you're an older guy, that's what it is. It's a process that goes a year, year, year and a half back. You know, it's not just well, Omir's ready to come out and, and you're going to sign him. Well, we've done our homework throughout the whole process, and we watched him. You know, in the, in the, in the summer, he's come up while he's taking classes and, and playing our PDL team. So we get to see him in, in real. Bigger games than, than college, more sort of what we think are going to be more like what he's going to see uh, when he turns pro, uh, seeing him in a training. And so you start to put all those pieces together, then it makes the decision pretty easy. And it was just more about him committing to coming out and, and becoming a pro. Uh, we knew that he always had uh, special gifts, and so just a matter of time. And, and once he made that decision clear, you know, we, we said, okay, just enjoy the rest of the college season, and you know, we'll talk at the end. And so, uh, and to his credit, you know, I think he's come in and and, uh, and handled himself pretty well. You know, for a young player, uh, it's pretty mature and, and understands the grind of being in a professional environment. And so, uh, I think uh, you can probably see why he was rewarded with with getting uh, being the first sub or second sub in, down in, in Dominican Republic because of all the work that he's done in preseason to earn those minutes. Okay, time for two more guys. We'll go to Dan and then Peter. Daniel Forrestan, once a Metro, uh, first for Dennis, then Chris. Dennis, how happy are you to see not just the USL players fitting in with the guys in the MLS roster, but those that were drafted and those that came over like, like Marcus Epps from Philadelphia? How happy were you to see them integrate so quickly in the preseason with what you're trying to do? And then Chris, afterwards. Yeah, look, I think it's, again, it's important because we do our homework prior to all this, and so we've sort of identified guys and we keep track of guys, and we think that guys that can make, uh, can come in our system and do well. And, and so when we make those moves in the offseason to either trade up in the waiver uh, wire, waiver draft to get a player or, or make some moves in, in at the, at the draft, is to get players we think that can, can have success here. And so when they come in, and, and, and it's always a challenge how fast can they adapt. It's sort of a, it's a shock to the system because the way we play is different and, and the demands that we put on the standards is different. And so it's just a matter of them getting used to that and how fast can they adjust. And once they do, 
then all the qualities that we see and that we saw in them, it makes it easier now and you start to see that come through. Uh, so it's exciting and, and it just speaks for, for young players that, that, you know, when they're in the USL, they can see guys that, that started at some point with the USL and then now look at what they're doing with the first team and you know, Aaron Longs and, and Flo's, I mean, the list goes on, but it's just, you know, we're creating this platform for the pathway for them uh, and it's just for them now to come in here and, and do their job and, and do as the best they can. And then if they do, then I think then they will be rewarded. And for Chris, I know you're not overlooking Pantoja for this coming Wednesday, but if you do defeat them, there's a juggernaut coming afterwards, and that could be Santos Laguna. You know, when you took on Tijuana last year, you were able to handle them, but, you know, this is probably going to be a different animal if you get that far. It always is. I mean, again, the competition is... Is a, is a great one and it's difficult and, and teams, Pantoa included, are there for a reason. You know, and, and it's easy to say, you know, some say, yeah, Pantoa is not that good. This is what you, you know, on the outside what you hear. But our guys handled the game the right way. They understood exactly what the game would look like. And in so many ways we put it on our terms and we'll understand what Wednesday looks like here. And then if we have to quickly shift our mentality to Santos, um, we've already wa started watching them. And any time you're playing you know, that next, maybe the next stage, and then especially Mexican teams, it's, 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 uh, it poses a different challenge um, in many ways. So we will have to quickly shift and get ready. Tactically, understand uh, what, what to expect out of leg one the demands of that game and what the, what we'll have to accomplish in leg one but um i think we'll we'll be we'll be prepared if that's the case to understand how we can hurt them and how they can hurt us and i think our our advantage or what makes us good is that we're hard to play against without the ball with the ball and we'll, we'll be aggressive that's for sure you've had a you've had to replace key players several years in a row now and uh, obviously this year, Tyler Adams. Um, is there anyone in camp that's really stood out or in the preseason that's ready to take the starting job? And uh, do you see it as a, someone a like for like, or is someone else going to is going to be a mix and match? And um, the the second part is um, with Tyler doing so well so quickly um, in Germany. Is that obviously a feather in the cap of the Red Bulls organization? Have you uh, seen your stock rise in clubs around the world? Just their opinion of the Red Bulls and you know, what kind of players you're producing? Yeah, look, in, in terms of the gap left when Tyler left, you know, I think we've seen, you know, our, you know when Dennis had Mark Tchaikovsky signing him was a big uh, priority in the offseason and not, not uh, you know, bringing just any any new player into the system. Is there's a learning curve? Is he going to be a fit? We, are, we knew that Mark uh, would fit our system here played many games last year and maybe his best down the stretch so that was important for us and that mark is different he's different from sean davis he's different from tyler he's 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 got some really interesting qualities and he's comfortable exactly in that part of the field we've tried to put him up higher at different times but his best spot is right there and he's a guy that's real comfortable getting forward where sean has taken a role now to, to cover a little bit deeper um and for the last month, Christian Katsuras has been in the U20s, and we, we love him. His, he's actually a, a, a version of Tyler, but he's his own. He's got some great qualities of the fearlessness. He's great on the ball. He plays against the ball. We think we have some good options. And then even underneath with Kofi and Chris Lemma, so, and even Vince Bezicourt, who we've used deeper. So we, we like what we have um, in the middle of the field. We, again, I've, I'll say it again. We love our, the depth of this team. And uh, again, we'll, we'll see that very quickly. Uh, in these his next few games. The part that I always try to keep an eye on is, is you know, sooner or later you, you, you're going to make moves or you're going to, uh, players are going to leave. And so if you do your homework the right way, you're preparing the guys underneath. So when that day comes, it's an easy transition. And so we've shown that, you know, in the first year when we moved Dax and then Sasha, we just had another guy coming through it. And so this year we feel confident that what we have uh, in the team. And so, you know, you can never replace a Tyler or uh, it's just because they're different. They're di you know each person is different, and so for us, it's just making sure that we have the pieces in place so when that moment comes that we we can turn and go to them, and we're not in this like, oh no, now we lost the player. What do we do? So we have somebody that's sort of the understudy ready for that moment, 
Uh, and yeah, obviously, you know, it, it, it speaks volumes in terms of watching Tyler go over there and do well uh, for the whole entire Red Bull Academy and, and our, our team because that, that's for take, taking a player like Tyler to go over there, you know, just read an article, you know, he's one of the, the, the top 10 players uh, under 20 that are having success in the Bundesliga and he was ranked like in the top seven or eight. Uh, speaks volumes after playing maybe four or five games. Uh, and so, you know, I think uh, we can look back and be proud of, of, of that moment because, you know, it just started here with us with, with our RDS program all the way through into our academy and to our second team and first team. So it's really a true true story that, you know, I think that uh, our academy kids should be looking and hopefully saying maybe, you know, why can't I be the next Tyler Adams? You talk about USL and, and it's really interesting. Even with our national t team nowadays, you see so many – Americans, like a lot of the guys that are, you know, Greg has brought in so many of the guys that, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I've been part of that team. So guys that really can can relate with the with the badge and 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 defend it. And I see that through get, getting to look at guys like Derek Etienne, Alex Mule. There's a list of guys: Flo Valo, Vince Bezicourt, um, Tyler when he was here, Omir Fernandez. I mean, it's his dream to put on this jersey. And we have a lot of these guys, and you can talk about Ben Mines, maybe the biggest success story, maybe not Tyler, because who can take credit for this gem, right? And maybe Aaron Long. Um, look what he's done. I mean, he's, I don't know, he says he's the best defender. Uh, in the league. Is he the best defender in the country? We've said it for a while now, but he is top player. USL, he used this platform, incredible stories. So we, we have this, Thing going on okay DPs are nice to have if it works but when you see guys come to training and die for the team and love to be put on that jersey it's something it's hard to quantify guys and you know so for us it's proud it's one way you feel good about it and, and love being part of it but it adds something different to a team that and again Alex might be a great example of a guy that just will fight for the team and run for the team and just give everything and again Sean Davis is another maybe the man of preseason, but you have all these guys looking around, then you see our second team um, in preseason play against Portland, a team that maybe nine guys who were in the uh, MLS Cup final, we beat them 2-0 after 60 minutes, and there were some changes made. 2-0, 60 minutes, and they beat them 2-0. Wasn't, you know, against the run of play. Um, so that was that's impressive, and I've got to see that up close in person now for a few years, and now uh, really close uh, this preseason.